Hello, this is Hunter with another episode of Guitar Blog. It is Saturday, January 18th, 4.52 p.m. This is episode 24. Uh, so this week I've been playing around with a tune called Desafinado, which is a Hobeam tune, um, a bossa nova tune, which is really pretty. And uh, specifically, not that this tune is a was chosen for this purpose, but specifically messing around with a concept that a friend of mine told me about um, that he uses when he's playing a tune he doesn't know all that well, or uh, a tune with sort of non-functional harmony where the chords don't really move uh, in a common pattern. Things seem sort of disjointed, um, like Wayne Shorter's tunes are a good example of songs that don't really do what you expect them to do based on the Great American Songbook and all the standards that you've probably heard doesn't follow these same kind of patterns. So when you've been playing a lot of tunes that do follow in these patterns and your ear kind of gets tuned to the way these ones moves to sixes to two to fives and all this kind of stuff, uh, and then it doesn't do that, it can be, you know, exciting on the one hand because it's it's challenging your ear uh, and your ability to play over it, but it can also be a, a bit of a problem, uh, a challenge, I guess I'll say. Anyway, his, uh, his advice was to, to do something he calls stop or go, stop and go, whatever, which is where you don't try to play very much. You just play a, a note that works over the chord, usually a chord tone, uh, and then when the next chord happens, move only if you have to. So if the, if the note that you're already playing will also fit the next chord, then just stay there. And if you have to move, then move, uh, but don't move very far, because that usually whenever you're hearing a note that doesn't sound good you can go up or down by a half a step and then you'll find another note that, that does um, so this has been a really fun thing to do uh, I think when he told me about it probably like six months ago or so I found it too difficult because I didn't feel like my fretboard knowledge I guess was up to par to do something like that I still have a lot of work to do but I'm feeling a lot better about being able to find at least find a tune a note that that will work over a chord um, so it's been fun to mess around with. So I'm not doing it in the in the strictest sense where I am actually just holding on the note until I the chord changes and then and then doing you know playing very minimally like that. But I do find that the uh, the result of messing around with this, uh, paying more, I guess playing more mindfully and more uh, deliberately, is that I play I tend to play less, which is good, right? Um, because I find that, especially when I'm playing over tunes I don't know so well, well, really across the board, just when I'm playing in general, I'm playing too much. I'm feeling, I'm seeing the chords go by and I'm feeling, you know, consciously or unconsciously that I have to play something over the whole, all, every chord. I have to hit something from every chord and that leads me to play too much. I still do that and I want to work on doing that less, but, um, and, 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 and I think this is going, this is helping me do that. So what I thought I would do today is play this tune um, and work on, uh, when I take a solo, just playing a lot less and play, and kind of working on developing ideas and you know playing more mindfully, thinking ahead to what I might want to do, or it, it just in general playing fewer notes and trying to make those notes say more, I guess. Um, my, my solos tend to meander. Uh, the same way that I meander when I speak. So anyway, um, I think that's all I really wanted to, to do today and talk about. So uh, let me put this tune on. It's a, a really long form, so I won't um, I won't play through it a whole bunch of times. But we'll run it through maybe three times, which is pretty pretty good amount of music already. Uh, and I'll probably play, I'll try to play the head on the first go-round, give you a sense for what the tune sounds like, and then I'll take the last two and just sort of solo. Um, I don't actually know the melody 100%, I know the gist of it, uh, so I'll be reading some of that as I go, and probably getting it wrong, but that's okay, working on it. But anyway, what, what I'm listening for and what I want you to listen for is just a more deliberate uh, sound about my playing, playing less, thinking ahead, connecting things in a more smooth way instead of jumping around so much or playing too many notes. Uh, so here it is. Here's Desafinado. <laughs> ¶¶ 
uh, yeah, so yeah, it's a work in progress, but it sounds all right. Um, and like I said, I'm I'm more I'm pleased with what's coming out because it's you know maybe still not a well developed solo, but at least in the moment I am not just sort of what I described um, several blogs ago, where I'm just kind of like I feel like I lose consciousness, like I go to sleep and then stuff happens and then I wake up when it's not my turn anymore um, and I don't really remember what I did you know the test would be to stop the music and go okay now just play play again what you just finished playing and if you can't do it then that means you're really not giving a whole lot of thought to what you're doing you're just kind of hitting notes uh, there's plenty of that still happening in there uh, so I'm working on trying to avoid that um, maybe the way to do that would be to um, I think Lee Konitz has some a, a guitar teacher of mine in the past gave me a, a, a printout that Lee had done, um, where it's all these different s steps of ta of learning how to solo. At least his approach was to, you know, whatever it was. But it would start with play the melody and like know the melody hard, which of course I don't know, but know the melody and play the melody, and then embellish the melody in all these different ways until you're really just coming up with your own thing. But it's always you know related to the melody as much as possible so that you're playing melodically and you're creating interesting memorable uh, phrases like you would get in a, in a composed melody because that's all you're doing you're just composing sped up but anyway so that's it for this week uh, I would encourage you to try that I think it's been really valuable for me uh, the kind of like I said I'm not doing it uh, really strictly the stop and go thing uh, I think it works better on an instrument where you can maybe sustain your notes better but that's just my excuse uh, but anyway just you, kind of thinking about that like how can I what can what note can I play that's either right where I already am or really close to where I already am that's gonna sound good over the chord and try not to do too much more than that um, yeah it's good all going back to the kind of mindfulness deliberateness thing that I've been talking about Anyway, that's it for this week. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you at some point in the future. Bye-bye.